Alright ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Conquer 5.2. Today we'll be uh, just giving you guys a quick tutorial on how to use and fly the Quality Wing 787. Um, today we'll be doing a quick flight from Payne Field down to Seattle Tacoma um, inside of the uh, sort of the house livery 787. Here we go, looking good. Looking good. So I really haven't touched anything on this aircraft yet. Um, so right now when you load up the plane, typically unless you change it, it will be, you know, engines on ready to take off. So to get into more of a turnaround state, you need to turn the APU on, which I have done uh, right here. Just flick it from off to start. It'll start up on its own. You can check in the system. Once it sort of levels out, you have APU power. So I'm going to go ahead and shut down the engines. Here we go. So engines are shutting down. And you got all these warnings popping up on your primary flight display. And then while we're at it, in shutdown, you'd also, you know, I guess, turn off the hydraulics, everything out. Same with the generators, but we're just not going to touch that for now. And, you know, all the fuel pumps are out as well. Here we go. So this is pretty much like the turnaround state, at least for me. Um, so, uh, like I said, we'll be flying from Painfield to Seattle-Tacoma. So uh, what we're going to do is set up the flight computer first. So, uh, you know, the model, everything, check it out. Um, I'm going to load up a flight plan. You can just go to SimBrief um, and then load up uh, you know, the flight plan like normal and then download the Quality Wings um, flight plan and then just drag it into the uh, Quality Wings folder in the FSX root folder um, under flight plans. Um, and then here we are, just select that. Alright, so this is our flight. We're just going to go uh, activate, execute. So now as we switch the, this computer to plan you can see our route right there let's go ahead and zoom ourselves in yep there you go uh, this is our, our flight 30 miles and as we zoom in all the way we get the airport view at half a mile um, so now that that's done we're gonna go ahead and go to the performance initialization page for reserves we're gonna just put down 5.0 cruising altitude we're not gonna cruise too high maybe 7,000 feet and the cost index will just be 100. There's no point in really going too fast. Execute. Checklist. And then, um, checklist. oh, that does remind me. So this bar here that just turned purple, you click checklist. on this to type. Uh, if it's magenta, you can type using the keyboard. If it's not, then you can, you just have to, you can't type. So now let's get to the thrust limiter. Everything looks good. We really don't touch that. Uh, looks like it's set to 78%. All right, so takeoff information. Um, Let's see, we don't really need this because the position you can't insert manually, but the plane does have GPS, so it'll, it really does know where you are. So for takeoff info, we now go to the flight bag. We initialize the flight, and then now we hit performance. So the initializing flight loads all the information that you inputted from the computer into the, um, uh, into the flight bag, so, you know, uh, everything is all good. Uh, so now here we can do landing and takeoff. It's set to, to takeoff. So you want to copy the FMC data so it gets sort of the weight and everything going. And then you just want to set takeoff, uh, thrust to takeoff. Uh, runway condition right now, or sorry, the runway. Uh, that's actually a good question. We're not sure what runway we'll be departing. So we'll pull that in a second, but condition is dry. So to see, all right, here we go. So uh, departure runway is 16 right. And then here the calc button is now accessible. So you want to hit calculate. So it gives you three V1 speeds, VR, V2. Um, you know, sort of everything you need, uh, including your CG percentage. Oh, shoot, that's not what I wanted to do. Uh, anyways, it said 18, so I'll plug 18 back in. Alrighty. And then what you want to do is copy, or sorry, send output, and send to the computer. You hear the chime as it's sent over, and then it's sort of the information shows up here. You accept, and then you just need to manually input the 18 for the trim. The thrust you don't really need to touch, and it gives you like it needs to be up 4.25. Right now it's up 4.0. So let's go ahead and edit, change that. There we go, up 4.25. Um, and then we need to do departure and arrival. So here we have a pane departure. We select our runway, which is 16 right. Execute. Uh, back to the route. Um, go ahead and scroll through. Alrighty, and then now we need to do the arrival, Seattle. We'll be arriving pr probably 16 right from the winds that I checked a little earlier. Um, we won't really have an arrival, uh, you know, pattern, so we'll just execute that. 
I execute. And then uh, now you see under initialization reference, FMC prefi complete. So this means your plane is basically ready to take off and fly. Um, so we are pretty much done here. Uh, since this is a short flight, um, actually, you, I'll show you the uh, how to set up the approach in, this, in the next video. So pretty much we're done here with the computer. Um, 29 miles, fuel, yada, yada, yada everything is good. Um, so pretty much we are done here. Uh, we'll do the landing stuff in a bit. So let's go back to the menu now for the terminal charts. If you wanted maybe departure, you know, it sort of sets it up as you import the flight. You say complete, and then it brings up all the charts. Uh, Payne doesn't really have anything, but Seattle, you know, it's got all the stars, ILS runway, you know, one six right, um, which we'll be using later. Of course, the computer does have sort of a nighttime mode as well. Um, and then back button and the page up, page down to scroll through the various charts that are available. Alrighty, so let's see. Terminal charts. Perfect. So we're pretty much set with the computer. It's relatively straightforward. Um, of course, if you had any discontinuities, you would go to the root page. Um, you go to the list of waypoints and you click on the waypoint you want to move up. It's a discontinuity uh, in the line, and then you just click this and move it up to the above the discontinuity and it automatically clears itself out. So basically, we are pretty much set to go. Um, for the departure, we're going to move, make the first officer computer into this one. So we're pretty much set here before start checklist. Passenger signs uh, are right here. So ooh, that's off. Flip it on. So that's set. Uh, heading, everything's good. Takeoff speed, CDU, takeoff briefing. Everything looks good. And again, we'll check our, our uh, takeoff information. Yep, yeah, B1 speeds are all good. Um, and then. Let's see, normal menu before taxi. We don't really need that for now. So to start up the engines, uh, we'll get that started up. But let's go ahead and get GSX going here. Ooh, uh, not what I wanted. Here we go. GSX, prepare for pushback and departure. So we'll just pick... Uh, wow, there's a lot of options. We'll just pick Delta Worldwide Flight Services. I don't know. Um, and then we'll do tail right. And we don't want to start up the engines. And as you see, we got our GSX coming in. A nice super tug to get us going. Once they're connected, we'll start the engine startup procedure. Uh, APUs are running, uh, run, already running. Technically, here are the doors. You, know, you click on them to open them up. Um, you got the interior lights, which are very nice at night. Uh, each door has its own light as well. External power is right here. Once you click on that, it'll turn green. Once it's connected, uh, the external power buttons right here will illuminate. And then you just push them in to turn them on. Alright, so that's pretty much it for sort of the getting the flight ready for pushback, departure. Um, and of course for this you would want to um, set your al altitude on the, on the, uh, uh, the what is it called, <laughs> on the autopilot to um, your ultimate cruising altitude. Here we go. And let's go ahead and check outside. So it looks like we are locked in. Super tug is good to go. Let's go ahead and get ourselves back inside the plane. We're flying with the Rolls Royce Trent 1000 engines. Um, so if you're going on the clock, you now activate the clock after you close. The elapsed times is basically gear to gear, take off to take off. Or sorry, take off to landing, not take off to take off. So we're ready to go. We'll turn off parking. Alright. So we'll start up engine number two, so we'll turn on uh, the hydraulic C2s, uh, and then we'll push them in to turn them on. Um, let's see, fuel pumps will be engaged. Even if you have no fuel in the center, you would still push them in. And then, uh, basically now we're ready to start up, so we're going to flick the right engine, engine two starter, to start. And then we come down here to the fuel control and flick this up, and then the engines will automatically start starting. As you see, it says auto start. Um, and here we go. And hydraulics from the second one are coming in. And we'll flick the, the C2s to auto. If you leave it on on, it won't actually do anything. So we want auto right there, and as you can hear the the deep rumbling as the engines are powering up. Oh man, the engine sounds are incredible. And there you go, there's trends powering themselves up. Incredible.
Go ahead and grab a screenshot of that. Alright, so we're pushing back. These engines actually do not take too long to start up. Um, so as we look, C2 is good, so we now have uh, everything's connected. It's running now. Um, so pretty much engine oh, is good. Let's clear the messages out from this computer. Um, yes, yeah, so it looks like engine number two is started, so we'll do the same procedure for engine number one. Um, oh, did not turn the lab lights on. So you turn the lab lights on, beacons, taxis, everything else. And then you would uh, do the same procedure. Um, here we go, start or switch on, come down, flick up the fuel control, and there we go, auto start for the engines. We can sort of scroll through here to see all the flight controls. Looks like our trim is a little high. So we'll go ahead and lower that down to 4.25. There we go, all set. And then we'll hit the master caution just because it will keep giving us these warnings. Fuel low center, fuel pump, control left and right. So we'll, we'll take the fuel pump center off because there's no fuel in the center tank, so we don't actually need them right now. But if you did, you know, fly long haul, you would have that. Um, and then for TCAS, we're just going to turn it on to TA. All right, here we go. We're at the end of our pushback, and it looks like both engines are started, or at least uh, engine number one is coming down from the start. So here you go. Before taxi, anti-ice as is. Recall is checked. Auto brakes are rejected. Take off right here, right by your landing gear pedestal. Flight controls, um, all right, let's go do a quick flight control check. Full left, uh, full right, neutral, full up, full down, neutral, and the rudder, full left, full right. So the rudder is interesting when you're on the ground and you're stationary, the rudder will move, but as you move, the tiller will actually uh, operate. So this is tiller steering, uh, but you'll still use your rudder controls to get that steering. So flight controls is checked, ground equipment is clear. Um, and then really, that's it. So let's go ahead and turn off the APU. So turn that off. We'll leave the APU gen on. And then uh, flight director on. And then we want to hit VNAV and LNAV. And then, of course, take off. Go around right here under the autopilot button. And then we're pretty much set to go. As we wait for the ground equipment to move around, let's go take a look at the plane. So the standard left engine view, incredible, but you can just hear the engine sort of rumbling. While we're sitting here, let's go ahead and uh, move ourselves to the, so this is the, the, sorry, the wing rear. And let's go ahead and drop the flaps too. Right, it's clear. Here we go, here come the flaps. And they should be on flaps fly five. Please return all seat backs and tray tables to their upright and stowed position. Alright, flaps fine. And we are clear to go, so now we get our taxi lights on right here. Um, and that's really all we need right now as we get ready to depart. Push back. FMC message. So then we can clear this by just doing cancel recall. Alright, and then of course our HUD is right here. I'll normally flip it down for to, right before we get onto the runway. So here we go, let's get going. Um, uh, right. So typically, what you want to do is uh, for both that mode, you I normally have the you, here is the vertical profile right here. It will pop up on the bottom, and then I'll normally have terrain and TCAS on the big one, and on the little one I'll still have TCAS on, of course, um, and then I'll probably have the weather radar, which you know doesn't really do anything right now. Oh God, should probably pay attention while we're taxiing. Always good, always important. So here we go. And we're pretty much at the end of the runway, so we'll be able to test taxi on, take off. Uh, I mean, our before takeoff checklist is complete, and next is just after takeoff, which is landing gear and flaps up. Um, so let's go ahead and, and lower this range. We don't really need it to be on 30, so 20 will be good. So as we're approaching the runway, we'll go ahead and get all of our landing lights on right here. Um, typically these planes take off with their runway turnoff lights and of course get that strobe on as well.
Here we are, cruising towards the runway. All right, so let's go ahead and just taxi onto the runway, get onto the that portion, flip this down. Alrighty. So now we're gonna arm the auto throttles right there, those two buttons. You don't really need to turn the auto throttle on. Um, once it's armed, it'll sort of engage, take off, go around mode on its own. And of course, we'll arm our speed brakes for takeoff in case of a rejected takeoff. All right, here we are. We'll just sort of cruise towards the center line. And then once we get onto the actual runway itself, we'll go, we'll go ahead and uh, stop. We'll do a complete stop and then uh, get these engines up to a nice solid N1 and then uh, get it to go. All right, here we go onto the runway here at Payne Field. All right, let's go ahead and stop ourselves right here. Perfect. And uh, all right, advanced engines to pull them up and uh, let's get going. Oh man, the engines sound incredible. And of course the computer has already calculated sort of the, uh, the throttle limit that we need to use to get off the ground. But here we are moving swiftly along the runway. Here we are, past our VR speed, let's go ahead and rotate. And of course follow our flight director up. Hang this a little quick right. Alright, and now we'll engage the autopilot. Autopilot on. The auto throttle. Autopilot on command. Command, and then of course we are raising our flaps as needed. And uh, landing gear is coming up. So before takeoff, we're pretty much set. Alright, and as we're climbing up, we'll retract flaps. So yeah, thank you guys so much for tuning in to episode 1 of uh, the Quality Wings 787 flight tutorial. And um, yeah, tune in for part 2 as we sort of explore the arrival. And uh, I'll see you guys later.